What's up guys and welcome back to Monink. If you guys are new here, then what is up? My name is Erica. Hey, how you doing? If you're into the history of the ancient Greeks and the Romans, maybe you're just into the mythology and maybe, maybe you just want a smutty Greek mythology inspired romance book to read. Well then this is not only the channel for you, this is also the video for you, this is the playlist for you. We have a lot of stuff on this channel, especially about Greek mythological retellings. So if that sounds like you, you guys are going to want to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you know every single time I post in the future. But on topic of today's video, and as you can see from the title, we're going to be discussing Promises and Pomegranates by Sav R. Miller. Now before getting into what this book is about, I do just want to have like a public service announcement that I have a cold currently, so my voice is constantly going like in and out of being audible, <laughs> shall we say. And so therefore, if it starts to crack throughout this video, I will be taking drinks of water and try my best to make sure that this is as easy to listen to uh, and not like my scraggly, gross, sick voice. It is just a cold, have no fear. So I'll be doing my best. I just want to make that known in case my voice does just go out like at the end of a sentence. I'm not going to be re-recording the sentence and like re-saying the sentence. We're just going, we're going to just roll through it, okay? Anywho, so Promises and Pomegranates, this beautiful book right here, what is it about? This book follows the main character who is Elena, who is basically a mafia princess for lack of a better way of, of describing her. She's from this massive mafia family. Her dad is this mafia boss and she gets, um, I was going to say corralled, but she's not cattle, even though she is treated like cattle a lot of times in this book. She gets forced into marrying this guy who is basically a mafia hitman. Um, and so the whole book is just the two of them kind of figuring out their relationship dynamics. She doesn't really know him. He's significantly older than her. He's about 33 and Elena is about, I think she's like 21, 22-ish, maybe 20. She's like in her early 20s. He's about 12 years older than her-ish. And so it's really just about them after being forced into this marriage. They now have to get to know each other. They've got to figure out their relationship dynamics and so on and so forth. Now, because she is a mafia, princess again, that's the only way I can describe her. And because he is a hitman, there is a lot of danger in the book. There's a lot of darkness. We're just gonna say that right now, lots of trigger warnings for this book. It is really a roller coaster. Like genuinely some of the stuff that happens came out of absolute nowhere. And I was like, what is happening? And how did the one, huh? But because this book is not based on literal myth, and we'll get into that in a second, I can't really give that much away because I will be giving away the story. But basically, uh, basically as they figure out their relationship, he also takes her to where he lives. He sort of takes her to like, like this little island, which is off the coast of Boston, which is where this whole story is set. And so she has to figure out not only her role in the relationship, but also her role in, you know, their new home, in their new society, her new society, you know, that like she was taken away from her family. Her family decide that they want her back. There's all of that drama going. There's a, there's a lot, as I've said, and it's mainly centered around the relationship and how they end up uh, actively falling in love with each other because they do, because you can't write a book like this nowadays where the ending is just abysmal. So it is uplifting in that sense. And it is really a story of, uh, a, a story of the journey through their relationship. Now, the reason why you guys watch these reviews is because you guys want me to review books that say they're inspired or that they are retellings of Greek mythology and how true they are to the myth. And that is generally, if you guys are new here, that is the large chunk of these videos that I do a very small summary as you guys just saw of the book. And the majority is just analysis of what they used, how they used it, if they did it well, etc., etc., etc. I do want to highlight something though, that this book is said to be uh, inspired by the myth of Hades and Persephone, hence the whole pomegranate on the front of it. And I just want to make a note right now that right at the beginning, there's an author's note, right? So Sav R. Miller writes an author's note and she says, Cal and Elena's story is a dark contemporary romance based loosely on the framework and characters of the myth of Hades and Persephone. Please be aware that it is not fantasy, historical romance, or a literal retelling. So I wanted to highlight that right now because as you guys know, I am like, it is like my pet peeve when authors decide that they want to write a retelling and then I read it and it has nothing to do with the original mythology because I think that is incorrect marketing. It is telling you guys, it's telling people who don't know the myth that they could potentially learn about the myth through that retelling. And that really, really does my head and it really bothers me. It's my main point of criticism when talking about these books. And so I have to give the author, I have to give Miller all the points here for starting the book before she even gets into the book itself. She's put a note saying it's not a retelling. It is not fantasy. This is what this book is. It's loosely based on this. And I love that. I love that she did that. So automatically I went into the book with much higher hopes uh, for just enjoying the story and for just following the characters and all of that sort of stuff, rather than looking out for parts that were the myth, if that makes sense. 
In saying that though, and you guys are gonna be so surprised when I say this, I actually think that she didn't need to put that in there because I think this is actually a retelling of the myth in a really weird way. So just bear, just bear with me. How this book is set out is so dark. It is unbelievably dark. The circumstances are just weird in my opinion because it's mafia based, right? So lots of people die, lots of extraneous circumstances. And as I said, that it's based on the, you know, it, the story starts really, it's not based on the story starts with Cal, who's the main guy in it, forcing Elena to marry him. Like literally, you guys, picking up her hand and forcing her to sign a marriage certificate. Okay, this girl has no say in it whatsoever. However, it was a deal that was constructed between Cal and Elena's father. So even though Elena doesn't know anything about this, she's forced into this. The two men have already agreed. They, they're both standing there. Her dad is there watching this happen. And her dad calls a priest to like officially make it happen in the eyes of the church and all of this. So you're watching this really awful thing happen right at the beginning of this book. And you guys, <laughs> that is the most accurate, the most accurate retelling of the Hades and Persephone myth that I have seen in any mythological retelling. That's gonna sound really weird to a lot of you, but that is quite literally what happens in this myth, in both the Homeric hymns and also in uh, in Ovid, when he retells, this, this Roman writer retold a lot of the Greek myths. And so he retells that in full. And that is what happens. I'm so sorry to burst everybody's bubble of like, this was a really cute romance and like Persephone just fell in love with Hades. That's not what happens in the myth that actually Hades goes to Zeus, says it's really goddamn lonely in the underworld because everybody's dead. And Zeus says, well, I have this child with Demeter that you could definitely just take and marry if you want because I, I don't see what else she's doing. So you can take her the minute that you see, no problem. And so that's exactly what Hades does, right? In the original mythology, she, Persephone is literally kicking and screaming and crying and trying to get as far away from him as possible. And he kidnaps her and takes her down to the underworld where then she is forced to stay. And then the myth goes on and on and on. And so having the book open with this forced marriage that the two people, the two men knew is exactly mirroring mythology, which is wild to me. I'm like, this is the first time that I've seen someone actually really go into that part of the myth, which I really appreciated. And further than that, he does take her to a little island outside of Boston, as I said, takes her there. And so she, not that she's trapped there. He doesn't say you can't leave, but he very much, you know, they get to the island. What is she going to do? She has no way of getting off the island. There's no way of her going home, you know, all of this. So she's stuck there and she doesn't really represent Persephone in, you know, the ways that you see in other retellings. Like she tries to garden at one point in the book, which is actually really sweet that when she really tries to garden, she just kills all the plants. But like, that's the only real time that we see her be Persephone. The rest of it, she is her own character and Cal is his own character. He's not Hades in the slightest really, aside from that whole marriage thing. But as you go through the book, I gotta say she learns to love him in the same way that in the myth, you know, she's stuck in the underworld. She realizes that she's now the queen. She has no say in it, Persephone that is, has no say in this. And over time she does love Hades and they do end up being this power couple, but it doesn't start that way. And that's exactly what Savar Miller did in this book, which was <laughs> totally unexpected. I did not expect to be that impressed with the way that she took the myth, considering she gave this whole thing of being like, well, it's not the myth. And then she actually did a really good job in my, uh, you know, professional internet opinion. So I did already review this on my Goodreads. So if you guys saw that, then you'll notice I actually only gave it one star. And the reason why I gave this book one star, despite having just praised the use of the myth and actually the way that they use the myth, I thought was pretty great and all of this. I gave it one star because outside of the mythology that was used and just the genre of the book, holy crap, is it dark? And I worry that, I know that there are trigger warnings at the beginning of it, but I just feel like not marketing it as a retelling, people are gonna see that as like <laughs> something to like aspire to or something, I don't know. As I was reading it, I was just worried about the people who might read the book, where it's like, you, I get that this is a whole genre and that people love it. It's not my thing. I learned from reading this whole series, like mafia romances are not my genre at all. But some people will read this and will see Cal being like really the guy again. Cal's being really possessive in a very unhealthy way towards Elena. And I worry that people are gonna go, oh, that's cute, I want my man to be. No, we don't want any of that. And further than that, you have a lot of these scenarios that are just really disturbing. There's a whole scenario with uh, Elena's mom and everybody who's read the book will know what I'm talking about, but I'm not gonna ruin it for you guys, so don't worry. But like. 
that whole whole storyline with Elena's mum, I was like, holy crap, this is this is beyond strange. <laughs> this is this is not something that I felt comfortable reading and being a part of as I was reading it. And again, there are lots of trigger warnings. It's just that I think I was worried at people who were reading the book. I was worried whose hand it might you know, it might land in, especially because my audience might kind of be like me. Like I know a lot of you guys are not you know, sitting out here being like, Erica, read Mafia Romances. You know, you want me to read Greek mythology. And so it's my job to recommend Greek mythology retellings to you. And I worry that those of you who are gonna pick this book up are gonna be scarred as f by it. Just because of the parts that are not the mythology are so incredibly dark. Um, and so I do just want to highlight that now. The reason why I got a one star is because of the genre, because of the dark moments. It had no reflection on the mythology that was used. So did I like the book as a whole, I think seeing the structure of the myth actually in there and like a true structure of the Hades and Persephone myth, I have to say, mythology wise, I enjoyed it thoroughly. And I thought that it was a really, really fantastic way, a really fresh way, a really new way to get this whole Hades and Persephone story out there in the right way, right? Because again, I complain constantly that it's all this ridiculous, mushy romance crap that I'm like, where did that come from? So I enjoyed it based on that. But I have to say, if you are under 18, do not touch this book. Like genuinely don't do it. And if you're over 18, I would say, um, you really need to consider what you're triggered by when you read. Um, if you don't like blood, like even a little bit of blood, don't pick this book up, it's not for you. And story-wise, outside of the mythology, I didn't necessarily enjoy it because it's not my genre, so it got one star on that front. But again, the mythology, I was very impressed by. I think that Sav R. Miller deserves a lot of praise for that, and I actually think that she should take out that line in the beginning of her book and just say, look, it's based on Ovid, or whichever ancient author that she wants to say. It's not the version that you like, it's not the version that you like, but hey, this is the mythology. So yeah, this is actually, I, I have to say, based on the mythology, probably the closest that we've gotten to it uh, out of any of the Hades and Persephone retellings that I've read, which I did not expect I was gonna say when I started this book. But yeah, so remember, if you are under 18, do not touch this book, but I have left the uh, links in the description below. Uh, there's a lot of trigger warnings on it. Please read all the trigger warnings and decide if you want to read it then after that. Also, if Mafia Romance is not your thing, probably not your book. But if you just wanna see somebody who actually takes the dark uh, reality of the myth, and makes it into a modern story, then definitely consider reading this book because I think it sort of, it, it trumps the other ones in my opinion, which again, we're shocked by. But thank you guys so much for watching this book review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys want to support the channel more so than just hitting the subscribe button, because I know a bunch of you have already done that. We do also have a donations page. So please look in the description below. You will find that a little bit lower down. There's also a merch link, but if you don't want to buy merch and you just want to donate, then you can also do that or vice versa doesn't really matter to me. I just know that a bunch of you keep asking me in the comments below, over email, whatever it is, how you can support the channel, and that is the best way to do that. So thanks again, and we'll be seeing you next time with actually the second book in this series, which is called uh, Vipers and something. I'll be, whatever. The next book review is the second book in this series, so I'll be seeing you guys then.